Alright, so this video we're going to look at finding the correlation coefficient, R. Okay. Uh, so let's let's talk a little bit about what it what it is. Okay. So the sample correlation coefficient R, it it's a measurement that is that tells you the strength of a linear relationship between X and Y. Okay. It's a unit it's a unitless measurement between negative one and one. Okay. If R is equal to one, then that means it's a perfect positive linear correlation. If R is equal to negative one, then it's a perfect negative linear correlation. And if R is equal to zero, then there's no linear correlation. And the closer that R is to 1 or negative 1, that means it, uh, it's a better relationship of the line. Okay, The line describes a better relationship between the two variables x and y. Okay, And if, it's, if R is a positive value, then that tells you as x increases, Y increases. So that means you would have like a positive slope of your line. And then a negative value R tells you that as X increases, Y decreases. Okay, so that means you would have like a negative slope. Okay, all right, and <clears throat> so let's look at the, uh, the formula here. So you can see it's a pretty big formula and it's you know, it, it's nothing, you know, it's, it's not difficult to do. Um, basically, you just need to find each of these and then just plug them into the formula. Okay, so you can see that we need the sum of x, y. We need the sum of x, the sum of y. We need the sum of x squared, and we need the sum of y squared. Okay, now you see this sum of x squared and this sum of x, all of that squared, those are two different things. This right here, and I'll explain more when I when I when we get to plugging this stuff in the formula, but you're gonna be given x and y values. Okay, Th these numbers are gonna be given to you. Okay, so what this one means is you sum all of these values and you get a an answer and then you square that number. That's what that means. What this one means is that you have an x squared, so you're going to square this number, write it down, square this number, write it down, square this number, write it down, and so on, and then you're going to add this column up and get an answer. Okay, so that's the difference. <clears throat> All right, so let's go over here to our problem. Okay, and and let's just let's find everything. Okay. All right, so here's our example. It says the following data are based on information from domestic affairs. Let X be the average number of employees in a group health insurance plan and Y be the average administrative cost as a percentage of claims. Calculate the correlation coefficient R. All right, so remember from the formula, okay, we need what? The sum of XY, we need the sum of X squared, we need the sum of y squared, and we also need the sum of x and the sum of y. But you can see we have an x column and a y column. Okay. So you see what we need to create? We need to create columns for this, xy, x squared, and y squared. So let's go ahead and do that. So this can be our xy column. This can be our x squared column, and this can be our y squared column. Okay, all right. So let's go ahead and get this x y column. Okay, 
So to get this, this just means x times y. So I'm going to multiply this column times this column and put my answer here. So 3 times 40 is 120. Okay. 7 times 7 times 35 is 245. And then we have 15 times 30 is 450. And then we have 35 times 25 is 875. Let's see, 75 times 18 is 1350. Okay, so that takes care of the XY column. Okay, all right. So now let's look at our X squared column. So all that is, is I'm going to take each of these values and square them. Okay, so 3 squared is 9. 7 squared is 49, 15 squared is 225, and then let's see, 35 squared is 1225, and then I have 75 squared is 5625, and then we're going to square each of these values. So I've got 40 squared is 1600 and then I'm going to square the 35, the 30, the 25, and the 18. I'm going to pause the video while I do it and then when we pick back up I'll have it all filled out. Alright, so we've got all that all the chart filled out. Okay, so remember the way I got this is I just squared the 35 to get this, squared the 30 to get 900, squared the 25, squared the 18. All right, so now look what we need. We need the sum of each one of these columns. Okay, so here let's go ahead and sum the x column. So the sum of the x column that is going to be, let me write it in a, let's write it in red. That's 135. That's the sum of the x column. Okay. I guess we could come over here and write it too. Let's see. So the sum of x is 135. And then we need the sum of the y column. That's going to be 148. So the sum of y is 148. And then the sum of xy, just add all these up in your calculator. That's 3040. And then I need the sum of x squared. Add all these up. And that's going to give me 7133. And then I need the sum of the y squared column. So when I add this up, that's going to give me 4,674. Okay. So now I have, uh, I've added all these up. Now, what's the other thing that we needed in the formula? Well, if you look back over here, notice we need n. You see that? We need n. So, you know, n is the number of values. So in this problem, n is equal to 1, 2, 3, 4, 5. Okay. Now, this is, this is the mistake that's made quite a bit. A lot of times students will get up here and when they count them, they'll count 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10. That's not n. Okay, it's not how many numbers there you have, it's how many s pairs of numbers, how many XYs you have. Okay, so there's one, two, three, four, five. Okay, all right, so that's N. All right, so now let's just plug this in our formula and 
let's go ahead and just write down the formula again so we know R is equal to that's going to be N times the sum of XY minus the sum of the sum of X times the sum of Y over and then that's going to be the square root of N times sum X squared minus the sum of X all of that squared times the square root of n times the sum of y squared minus the sum of y all of that squared. Okay, And so now all we do is we plug each one of these in. Remember this is the sum of x and this one is the sum of y. Okay. Alright, so plug this in so we get r is equal to n which is 5 times the sum of xy so the sum of xy is 3040 minus the sum of x which is 135 times the sum of y which is 148 over the square root of n that's 5 times the sum of x squared which is 7133 minus the sum of x squared. Remember how we talked about this. This and this are different. This is the sum of the x squared column. This is the sum of the x column okay, which is 135 and then we square it. Okay, That's the difference. And then that's times the square root of n, which is 5, times the sum of y squared, which is this, 4,674, minus the sum of y, 148, and then square it. Okay. And now we have to punch all this into our calculator. So, you know, if you know how to use your calculator good, that's that's great. Uh, you could just type in the numerator. Uh, 5 times 3040 minus 135 times 148. And that's going to give you negative 4780. So we can see that R is going to be negative. Okay. And then we punch this in. So let's see. 5 times 7,133 minus 135 squared. And then I need the square root of that. And so the square root of that is 132. And it's a bunch of decimal places. Uh, for the sake of this video, I'm just going to round it to two decimal places, but it's actually 132.0605922. Okay, and then times this, so that's five times 4,674 minus 148 squared, and that's the square root of that is 38.29. Uh, I'll round it to two decimal places and it's actually 38.28837944. And then, you know, you can just punch all this into your calculator. So that's negative 4780 divided by. Now remember when you do the divided by, you got to put this times this in parentheses. Uh, so that's 132.06 times 38.29. And you get negative 0.945. I'll round it to three decimal places. It's actually negative 0.94530343.
this is a three okay and so you know there's your answer and yes we did round here and you shouldn't but I did it for the sake of the video um, it would be it, it's nice if you understand how to use your calculator and you learn how to store and recall numbers that makes it a lot easier so I would recommend doing that okay but yeah I hope this helped and and also you know we get negative 0.945 so there's a there's a there's a good correlation there okay between the line and the and the points so that's that's close to one or in this case close to negative one so we can see that this as x increases y is going to decrease okay all right so i hope this helped uh, give me a like subscribe check out my other videos thanks for watching